Joining us live now is Michael Bosicu. He's a senior fellow at the Atlantic Council and a global affairs analyst. Michael, thank you so much for being with us. I understand from my team that you actually just got back from Ukraine yesterday. U.S. military officials are saying that right now Russia is out shooting Ukraine five to one. And that number could actually grow and widen in the coming days. Zelensky has said time and time again uh, that they need air defense and they need it now. What happens if Ukraine doesn't get the cover it needs at this point? What does that mean mm -hmm. for Ukraine's military? I mean, I assume that it, it's coming close to breaking point. Yeah, it is. Good to be with you. Um, so that five to one ratio, according to the Inst Institute for the Study of War, could increase to 10 to one if funding doesn't come in soon. Already, I mean, for the past weeks, we've been hearing um, reports from the front line of Ukrainian troops have, having to ration artillery on a big scale. We're also hearing about them really suffering uh, psychologically. Uh, they're not rotated often enough. So hence, there's talk of, talk of uh, a new uh, uh, changes to the mobilization law. But look, uh, when I left um, Odessa yesterday, uh, only for the second time in this war, we had a blackout in my particular area. And the uh, uh, air raid siren alarms have become nonstop. Uh, frequent barrages, barrages of uh, missiles and drones so a heck of a lot of anxiety, too, among the civilian population. Um, I want to read to you a quote from The New York Times, an, an opinion piece actually by uh, Ohio Republican J.D. Vance, just to sort of give you uh, mm -hmm. an image of where Republicans stand right now in the U.S. He said in this piece, an opinion piece in The Times, the Biden administration has no viable plan for the Ukrainians to actually win this war. The sooner Americans confront this truth, the sooner we can fix this mess and broker for peace. Without more aid coming from the United States, is that the direction we're heading in, just in terms of the US perhaps intervening in somehow negotiating with Moscow to take a portion of Ukrainian land? I mean, is that where we're heading to without more American aid? Well, first of all, I wish the MAGA Republicans would start living in the real world and see this war for what it is, an attempt by Mr. Putin to not only occupy Ukraine entirely, but go further into Europe. Secondly, um, it's not only the Republicans, but the Biden administration has to allow the Ukrainians to not only get more of that military aid that they're asking for, but to strike deeper into Russia legitimate uh, military targets. Thirdly, they also need many, many more air defense systems. For example, the port of Odessa feeds the world with Ukrainian grain, Ukrainian sunflower oil. Without electricity, it simply can't operate. It needs to be better defended because if it doesn't, if it isn't, uh, consumers around the world or countries on the brink like Sudan will feel that very, very quickly. So that aid needs to come right away. And one more thing, Zane, which is really, really important, I think, to point out is that that money is not all of a sudden 60 billion going to be loaded onto airplanes and sent to Kiev. A lot of it is actually going to stay in the United States with military defense companies, create jobs and create more that's wealth in the US That's such an important too. point. Yes. That is an important point, And that's something that Zelensky has brought up himself. Um, just in terms of the plan B, right? Because we have to sort of look at reality. And uh, the mm -hmm. US right now isn't handing over that money. So in terms of a plan B, where do things stand in terms of European allies stepping up? I mean, I know that it's virtually impossible for Europe to meet the shortfall and to fill the void that's left by the U.S. But how much is Zelensky talking to European allies about them stepping up their game to help Ukraine at this point? Well, you know, uh, war teaches you a lot of things. And the one thing war teaches you the most is you know who your best friends are. So I think the Zelensky administration quickly finding out that the UK is very important, European allies, and of course, the, the Baltic states. So they're trying to do as much as they can. But I think they also have to become a little bit more brave, a little bit more brazen, and at least start taking all of that millions and millions of dollars of interest being accumulated by Russian sovereign wealth locked up in places uh, like Belgium. Uh, also, Ukraine is doing very well at um, ramping up its own domestic production. But let's be clear about this. Unless the United States ramps up, especially its aid, it is entirely possible that within the next couple of years, Russia could be occupying the entirety of Ukraine and he will go further. He will not stop at its boundaries. Yeah, a lot of people have come out and said that, that this doesn't just end with uh, Ukraine. Mm -hmm. Obviously, if, if we allow Ukraine to fall, that sends a message to Vladimir Putin and a very, very Correct. clear one. Michael Bosicki, we have to leave it there. Thank you so much. All right,